You may have thought just then that I was simply making a silly noise. Well, indeed I was. I was making a bright sound and dividing it up into its harmonics. So listen to it again. It's a B flat. Did you hear those? Now, actually, when I go, all of those frequencies are present. It is the fundamental, that's called the fundamental, and all of the other pitches, all the other notes are added to it. And they make a colour in our ears. We don't hear, oh, lots of harmonics, lots of notes. Now, in order to separate them out, what I'm doing is finding the resonant space in my mouth. When you go into a bathroom or a shower and you sing a note, as I sometimes do if no one else is there and sometimes if other people are there, um, you hear occasionally it goes, whoa, and, you, and it sounds much louder than it should do. Try it. Any room, with preferably without carpets, and you will actually find that it's probably got regular dimensions. It'll be a square or something, and it'll be parallel walls. Try it, and then one of them will be resonated. So you can go, and one will go, and make a lot more noise. You may have experienced that. That's called the resonant frequency of that bathroom. Now, all I am doing is... In order to hear which notes there are, included in, in this, I'm making my mouth into a bathroom of different sizes and gradually making it go like that. So listen again. And I think you can hear them over this microphone and your speaker. Actually, the fundamental is that one. On its own, it would sound something like... I'm getting a little second harmonic there. I'm getting quite a strong one. I'm trying just to have... It's easier for an unbroken voice to do it. In fact, when I was very young, my father had an oscilloscope. He was a research scientist into underwater sonar in submarines, so he knew all about this. He had an oscilloscope. And you would have heard, you would have been amused to hear me say, Daddy, can I go and play with the oscilloscope? And he said, he would say, yes, try and do a sine wave. And that is the pure with no other note on it. This being a B-flat means this note is causing the air to vibrate regularly. It's excited vibration. It's as if all the molecules are dancing together because they're being made to resonate at the same frequency 233 times a second. 233 times a second, those molecules are going brrr, like that. And our ear picks it up as a pitch. Wonderful. Now, if you'd like to do it, and all voices can do it to a certain extent, the best way to do it, sing the name Marie with an American accent. So you go, like that, Marie. Now, Americans go, Marie, Marie. And that involves a little curling of the tongue. See if you can discover it, Marie. Marie. If you can, and you can get a little bit of that brightness, you are well on the way to really irritating the people who are in the house with you. So do try, because it's such fun, and everybody then wants to do it. So try Marie. Try, and then you spend time on the Marie bit. Marie bit. Marie. Do you hear? But I'm only speaking there. I'm going to sing this time on that B flat. And I'm actually going Moari. Moari. So I'm going to do Moari. Moari. 
then go brighter and brighter on the E sound. Marie. And you can then smile it. I'm making my mouth into bathroom shapes to resonate different parts of that note. We think. Yeah, it's just a bright sounding B flat. Yeah, it is. But it's made up by having lots of harmonics. How do we know that that's related to that when we just hear it? Tom D. How do we know that? It is twice the frequency. So that one is 466 cycles per second. And they fit together. So that's why an octave fits together like that. Because these molecules are going at 233. Three, and these molecules are going... And so they combine and have a nice dance with each other rather than a jarring dance where they keep hitting each other in odd places. They dance. You make the molecules dance, the air molecules. The molecules jiggle about and you make them with your voice. Do that. So try Maria like that. Another way of doing it is... But you start... You can start with an NG, mm, so that your the back of your mouth is sealed. And then that was me opening my tongue, using my tongue to open the back of the uh, back of the throat. It's called Mongolian overtone singing, and if you like it, you may like to go and find on YouTube Tuvan, T-U-V-A-N, overtone singing, sometimes called throat singing. I can't do Tibetan overtone singing or Sijit, S-Y-G-Y-T, look that up, or K-A-R-G-Y-R-A-A. -A. Jill Purse, first taught me to do this. Alex Glenfield uh, is an amazing overtone singer who goes through all of the different styles. When I first did it with Jill Purse, it was a whole day of overtone singing. And the next day I felt physically and mentally better than I had for years. It's a kind of wonderful meditation in the way that all singing and all music is a kind of wonderful, mindful meditation. But this absolutely has a concentrated effect. Have fun trying and get all your friends to join in with you rather than annoy them. Goodbye.